welcome to Cafe at 11 here this morning. Beautiful morning. Cheers. And I'd like to welcome my special guest, Sharon McDermott from Cork. Sharon, say hi and show us your mug, please. This one. <laughs> Shiver. Hi, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Sharon. You're very welcome. Before I let Sharon come in and tell you all about her journey, fascinating journey in her own words, let me just tell you some of the nice stuff that she wrote about herself. Okay, so Sharon McDermott, her business name is Kai Kai Kids, K-Y-K-Y Kids. You can probably see that in the background. Uh, what does your business do, Sharon? Boutique collection of children's clothing for retail and wholesale. How long in business? Four years. Uh, how many employees? Me and outsourcing. Uh, she says, I'm a, the creative passion behind Kai Kai Kids, children's clothing brand and baby gifts, which I started four years ago on my return to Ireland after 22 years abroad. Well, you must have been seven, Sharon. <laughs> Thanks, Colm. My work life began in the travel industry in Cork many moons ago. It took me overseas to Turkey in 1995, where I continued to work in travel for seven years, then into property development. When I just I wanted to start a family, I set up a small holiday lettings business so I could work from home. After my son, Kaya, K-A-Y-A, was born, the idea for Kai Kai Kids, I presume that was Kaya's nickname, came to light. And although it only started as a business when I re relocated home to Cork five years ago. And then something that nobody knows about her, she says, although I'm quite private, <laughs> I'm a bit of an open book. Sharon McDermott, it's a pleasure reconnecting with them, particular here on the Coffee at 11 show. So in your own words, Sharon, over to you for the next few minutes. Tell us you you know back in the day before kai kai kids please okay um i'm kind of going to follow in line with what uh, liam i suppose how he introduced himself yesterday and um i suppose my day started as um a young colleen in a small village in cork called glenville and i am the second child of four and my parents had the local post office and my dad's family had it the years before that and so that closed down about seven years ago and um, it had been 135 years in our family and like everything it was um, it was the center of the community so going back to the old days my dad would have started there on the switchboard there were telegrams then my mom took over the post office and my dad became the postman and it was very much I think um, it was like a hub where it was uh, communication and it was somewhere people did all their business, they paid their bills, they collected money, they paid money. And then very much I feel as I suppose as I grew up, we were always there serving, it wasn't really a choice. And um, I learned, now I know the, learned, the, the skills that I learned there were things like uh, customer service because we always helped. There was no such thing as we can't do it because they had nowhere else to go. Um, and another uh, quality I think I learned was to listen. People came for a chat, um, they needed help, a lot of people who were isolated. And so from there, I, um, I then went to secondary school in Cork and um, I spent six years in secondary school. And then um, it came to leaving cert and I was only 17. And I really, I was only thinking about this on my walk this morning. I had absolutely no idea where I wanted to go, what I wanted to do, but I was just really glad the school was finished. So I used to say that I wasn't academic, but when I look back, I, I worked really well at the subjects that I liked and they're connected. It was English, it was art, it was social science, it was all the creative side. And then maths Irish were just really not my thing. So at the end, I don't know why, I decided to go on to college and do um, a three-year diploma in computers, none of which is even heard of today. One was called Lotus 123. I don't know where it went and I never used it. And then in the middle of this, I was about two years into my course, my grandmother had a stroke, my mom's mom, and um, somebody needed to take care of her. So she moved to live with us and I took three months out to take care of her with my mom because she was still working and we minded her at home and within that time my mom's cousin came to visit he had a few travel agencies in Cork and he asked me would you mind coming in for three months to cover somebody who had moved to the UK just for um, a bit of a break and I went in for three months and I stayed three years then out of that it was the glorious days of travel where we had um, it was all freebies we never paid for a flight if, if you had um, Monday off, then Friday you went on standby, you could go to New York um, on a free ticket, something like £30 at the time to go to New York. Now, you wouldn't know how you're going to come home, but you would go standby on the way back. And I did come back in the cockpit. 
um, at one stage, but one of those trips took me to Portugal and I took my mum with me. I had, I found out the night before and we went off the next morning and I became very friendly with the holiday rep that was there. And she said, there's a job coming up next year for the next season, apply for the job and come and work with me. Great idea. So um, I did apply for the job and um, the company phoned me and they said, yes, we have a job, you need to be able to drive. So I did that, I said, oh yes, I can drive, I couldn't. So then I went off and applied for my driving test. I had my dad giving me lessons up old boreens and country roads and they came back and said, look, it's, we, we have to decide whether you're going or not. But in the meantime, they said, actually, job came up in Turkey, would you go? And I said, uh, yeah, okay, I'll go. I had never sold a holiday to Turkey. I didn't know anybody who'd ever been to Turkey. And about two months later, I packed my bags and I left. I love, the only thing, I, yeah. I love it. Let, let, let me come in on this. This is just, it's fascinating, right? Fascinating stuff. I knew, I knew this was going to be fun, right? A <laughs> couple of things. I loved the early years. Love the fact that, you know, the whole family, it was the, the, the only thing you had to do was help. Everybody had to help, right? I love yeah. the people came in for the chat. And you're clearly a chatty individual, so I'm quite sure the place was mobbed with people looking for a chat with Sharon. You left school at 17. You and I have that in common. Happy days. Hadn't a clue. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful. We were out there in the big, bad world. And uh, then this idea of, uh, can you drive? Of course I can drive. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah. There is, there is, there is a, there's a, a, a school of thought in businesses. If somebody asks you to do something and it's of interest to you, the answer is yes. And yeah. then it out. So well done you. So we're now in Turkey. We're now in Turkey. So take us quickly through the Turkey journey and to Kai Kai kids, if you wouldn't mind. Um, again, I think that was just a massive, um, I was full of bravery, full of excitement. And I remember leaving and thinking, oh Christ, what if, what if it doesn't work? And then I just went with the attitude, if it doesn't work, I come back. It's very simple. So I went with Gusto and I still remember the first night arriving there. I was on my own. All I had was a job. I was going to the next day. I had no training whatsoever. And I was supposed to be trained for three or four weeks. We had I had four days training. So basically I trained myself. And then we had, oh, so many ups and downs and um, issues in resort where people died. People in Ireland died. You had to get their families home. So there were insurance cases. There were people who died from the army. So you were dealing with um, the Department of Foreign Affairs here. You had um, family arguments, you people in hospital. It was endless. But the, the joy of the job, I spent eight years as a holiday rep and then a resort manager. And within those eight years, I, um, I really learned to think on my feet. Nothing was the end of the world. Uh, you would always find a solution. And I see it today, I'm still a problem solver. Even sometimes I'm trying to help people, I should mind my own business. Um, and on the other side, it was the most fantastic period of growing up where, when I think of the two years that I spent in college trying to, I don't know, be in some sort of a career path, it was the greatest waste of time because I am very much the university of life. So I learn on the job, I, I can teach myself, I will, I will always find a way. There's always another way. I believe that. So I spent eight years and then really, I, I think just hard labor and I was completely burnt out. And um, I had worked for three different companies, one Irish, two UK companies. And then at the end of that, I just felt like um, I needed a little break, which I did. And I took one season, one summer season out. And um, I decided that I would work for a small travel agency so I used to drive and host Jeep Safari. So I used to pick up tourists from, I made this up. I, I pick up tourists from the cruise ships and I would take maybe six Jeeps and we set up kind of a route. And then I would take them off for the day and I just took a break. And then after that, with my ex-husband, the following year, we had a great idea. They had um, family land and we had an architect friend. And for seven years, we built a very successful uh, business where we developed three big projects and um, it, was, it was unbelievable hard work. It was seven days a week. We were working all day, hosting people in the evening time. I was probably working 16 hours a day, seven days for six or seven years. And then at the end of that, I just felt like I, I didn't have the passion for it anymore and I wanted to start a family. So, um, and I could see also the business was slowing down. 
so I decided to hang up my boots and um, then along came Kaya, my beautiful 10 year old. So in 2009 and I was at home uh, and I was actually very, very ill during my pregnancy. So I was in bed for six months. And in that six months, of course, this was going and I thought, I can't just sit here and do nothing. So then I thought um, the people who had bought property from us, they were also looking for some form of income. So I started a very small, going back to my, my roots of travel, I started a small little business called Villa Rental Kushidasi, and I took back the properties and I used to rent um, for about four years. I, I rented about 15 properties a week. One man band, a little team of cleaners, two caretakers for the gardens and the pools. Um, and it worked really well. I had a lot of um, repeat customers. So then came, <laughs> that was ongoing. Kaya was only a baby. The summers were really, really hot. And I couldn't find nice bedding, cotton bedding for him. But in Turkey, they still have a fabulous system where you can go and choose, um, like from a roll of fabric, you can choose your fabric, you can take it to the tailor who's probably next door, and you can get your sheets made, you can get clothes made, whatever you want. And I'm sensing, and I'm sensing that we're just about to witness the beginnings of Kai Kai Kids. Am I right? Because yeah. Hell yeah, trying to keep up here with this journey is just phenomenal. Jeep, <laughs> Thank you. Right? Bu building apartment blocks, renting out people's holiday homes. You know, unbelievable. You certainly don't stop. Right, we're into uh, beautiful, beautiful fabrics. Take us to Kai Kai Kids and bring us through Kai Kai Kids up to COVID, will you? Yeah, so then um, I started to get uh, Kaya's sheets tailor-made. And um, as I then kind of researched that, the nearest city, Izmir, has the most incredible um, old style drapery shops. So I went there, then I started to match um, different prints. So first of all, I made sheets, friends liked them. I started to make them as gifts. The winter came, I started to make duvet covers. And then um, I gave them as gifts to friends of mine to see what they thought of them. Did they wash, did they like the colors? And then the following winter, I came back to Cork and I had a suitcase of 50 duvet covers I had made and I did a pop-up shop for Christmas and this was my market research. So I got a chance to meet moms and grannies and to hear the issues that moms were having and just basically to see was there a business and yes there was a gap in the market because a lot of uh, cotton sheets actually have a mix of polyester, kids have a lot of allergies, eczema and whatever. So this was the beginning of Kai Kai. So I was still living in Turkey and I started my search and I was still doing my holiday rental business. And I started my search and I came across a beautiful factory who were already making full bedding sets with matching towels and anyway, blah, blah. Um, my personal circumstances changed and I made my mind up to move back to Ireland. And so I came back. I kind of finished up, I handed over actually my, I gifted my holiday rental business and um, I moved back to Cork with uh, no job, uh, a mortgage, <laughs> a five-year-old child, uh, jobless and an idea, just literally an idea. And for uh, 10 months, see I'm very private, aren't I? <laughs> it's all coming out now. Um, for 10 months I said, Sharon, you really should learn to let go and just let people... <laughs> oh, no. I know. It's a failing. Oh, so after 10 months on the, sitting on the sofa with an ulcer on my leg, which I just couldn't heal, um, the idea of Kai Kai became stronger and stronger. And I believe that time, even though it was very difficult um, because I was settling and I was trying to get Kai settled in school, he was fine. I wasn't. I was the one trying to settle. And... Um, after about a year, I thought, OK, I'm going to go back to the factory. I'm going to see if I can import. I never imported anything in my life. And uh, the first delivery came and I started to wholesale. That was that was going to be my my initial um, plan. So I started with pop up shops uh, just to have some cash flow. And then I found some shops that were interested in buying it. And I hit the road. That was it. I literally just drove around Ireland knocking on doors. I still do it. Uh, knocking on doors and then what I realized when I was doing my pop-up shops my customers were very loyal and then of course you have the chat and when I listened to them all they kept saying was they were buying a lot of them as gifts 
And then they asked, do you have anything else? They might have bought several things for me. Do you have anything like baby grows? Do you have any clothes? So I went back in the summertime and I actually filled a suitcase because I didn't know whether this is going to work or not. I left my clothes. I filled a suitcase of baby bits and pieces and I brought them back. And I again went back to my pop up shop um, just to see was there again a market for this because pennies are selling, duns are selling, necks are selling. And there was because they were a little bit different. And the quality was really good. The price was was reasonable. It was good value. And um, from there came a factory that I just stumbled across. I liked some of their designs. And about four years ago, actually, no, three, about three years ago, I started to design with them. And then they started to manufacture under Kai Kai label. And it's yeah, it was it was a really exciting time because I fought so I, I would take maybe three flights and then I would do seven hours on a bus to get to the factory. Um, and they're a little bit old fashioned. Uh, the factory is 50 years in the family, but they want they want face to face contact. So I do my business with them personally. And because my amounts, my quantity is small, other factories have said, no, it must be thousands and thousands. And I can't sell that much. Uh, and I can't I can't hold that much um, cash in stock because the season is very short and it has to turn over. So there's really only two seasons in the retail business. It's spring, summer and then it's autumn, winter. Um, so I started to work with them and there's been ups and downs. You know, they've been fantastic. They've been a pain in the arse. Um, I have literally dropped tools here and gotten a flight and had to go there to talk to them. Um, so there's been ups and downs, but the, the business then really um, went off, like it evolved itself. So it went off completely in clothing. The bedding side went by the wayside. Um, the shops that I had that were buying some bedding still buy some gifts off me. And um, the wholesale side is still doing well. Let's say it can always be more. And then last year, what I realized, I, I find, I don't know if anybody else is in the retail business, but I find that um, a lot of the kids boutiques are struggling. A lot of them are quite um, established, 10 years, 15 years. One shop I deal with, they're 100 years in business. Um, but they're finding the online side of things a huge threat. And that, and that brings us very neatly to COVID. But before we go, yeah. to COVID, if you don't mind, Sharon. Thank you for sharing. Thanks for, for being here. It's all my pleasure. But this is this is you. This is you to a T. This is what you do. <laughs> and you brought us right in on a roller coaster journey. But there are a couple of things that I, I made notes of, if you don't mind. Um, I know Eamon commented on this uh, as well, but nothing is the end of the world. You figured that out. That's a, uh -huh. that's a, that's a, that's a life truism. Nothing is the end of the world. I uh, loved the fact that you gifted your holiday rental bills. You didn't you didn't say, well, if somebody buys it off me, I go do this. You decided I'm making this move. This mm -hmm. is a, a millstone. I, I've done that myself in the past where I've stepped away from something, said, there, you take it. If there's an upside, great. If there's a downside, great. It's not yeah. power, thank you very much. Uh, you never imported anything in your life. You use that phrase, right? Mm -hmm. Thinking about it, you also never did travel agency before in your life until you did it. And then you never built apartment blocks before in your life until you did it. And then you never ran uh, Jeep safaris any time. <laughs> no. So it doesn't, matter what, it doesn't matter what any of us think we want to do because we have never done it until we've done it. And that's just a really powerful message. You know, I, I, I've never reported anything in my life. Great. So you started. And now here we are. Uh, you listen. Love that. You go out and talk to your clients and listen to them. And as a result, you're now, you've got your own Kai Kai label and we're looking at some of the beautiful stuff behind you. Happy day. Yeah. Delighted. Delighted. So, Thank you. Uh, in fact, if you, if you call us at the website, Shelley, you might put the website into the chat for everybody, if you wouldn't mind. What's the website address? It is uh, www.shopkaikaikids.com. Shopkaikaikids.com. Thank you, Shelley. Yeah. So people can check out your wares there. Okay, so we're at the point of you were dealing with this Turkish family business over there, making stuff, own label. Mm -hmm. They face to face meetings, three flights, seven hour bursts. <laughs> yeah, I'm still <laughs> see, doing that. But but here's here's the thing, Sharon. I'm delighted to have you come on and say this because people think people in business have it easy. Right? Oh no! Look no. at your one. Look at your one there from Cork with the fancy clothes. Right? Yeah. Hasn't worked a day in her life. <laughs> right. I wish. 
Yeah, I know. But so that's that's the impression people have of, of business owners. Not true at all. So I'm delighted to hear this. Um, the, but so all of a sudden now, right? You started talking about hundred year old companies. You started talking about people wanting face to face meetings. You started talking about wholesale beginning to slow down. It going online. So where are you now? Where's the business now in COVID? Um, about a year ago, what I suppose the good thing about going on the road, and I love driving, so I'm lucky, and I love the contact with the the customer, with the shop owners, and I have fa some fantastic um, customers. Some also a little bit challenging, but then that also makes you work a little bit harder. Um, from listening to them, uh, the overheads are huge, and the competition is higher. And um, I suppose what I found is there's quite a few kids boutiques after closing down, not necessarily in the last 12 months or two years, but over the years they've, they've, they've stopped. Um, and for different reasons, it mightn't be good business. It could be, you know, somebody has retired. But what I realized was there is not a kids boutique in every town. So I would post something on Instagram and I generally was driving all the business to the wholesale or to the, the shops. So I was driving the wholesale side of the business only. And then I would have Mary and Kerry say down in Dingle where I don't have a shop and there isn't a kid's boutique. And uh, she would call and say, look, I really want that dress. I have a family occasion. Can you, can you sell it to me? And I was being very loyal to the shops and I didn't, it was also very difficult for me to handle one sale. So I was then trying to, keep the individual, the retail customer happy. I was trying to do this with PayPal and emails. It was all over the place. And so then um, when I was watching some of the uh, bigger brands like Next, they are wholesaling. Uh, Mayorel, one of the biggest, uh, say, Spanish brands, they wholesale, but they retail as well. They have an online shop. So I kind of gave in and I felt like, oh, is it going to be another big job? Yes, some of it is. It is another job, but it's also um it's also a service that i offer customers who cannot get to a baby boutique it could be in a different city or a different town um and the other thing from i suppose uh, meeting moms and i still do some pop-up shops and i do some uh festivals and things over the summertime is that everybody is time poor we all are i am you know it was my dad's birthday a couple of days ago and anyway there was nowhere to go and he was looking for a coffee pot and so i found a coffee pot online and it arrived it was exactly what he wanted um and i didn't have to COVID or not i didn't have to truck around looking for it so i suppose COVID obviously isn't good for anybody's business but what i'm realizing now as i kind of sit in this is that um it has it has made me or it has opened my mind to start thinking more about the online. Yeah, it, it makes perfect sense, Sharon. Uh, that's a lovely story you told about your dad's birthday. <laughs> you say you love driving. I personally hate driving. To me, it's the biggest waste of time. So this whole COVID lockdown has been wonderful for me because I'm working on a mastermind group with, with uh, Park Amalia. And we were, I was driving an hour and a half to meet him for an hour to drive an hour and a half back. So a one hour meeting took four hours now it's a one hour meeting's taken 45 minutes right? yeah yeah uh, we we're we we're having this chat we've got people on from all over the country having this chat now nobody had to drive it's just phenomenal so i'm really excited about the world post-covid and by the sounds of it you're beginning to you're beginning to think hang on a second it's going to go online more and more and more does mm -hmm. that does that float your boat what, what does the world look like post-covid for you what would you like it to look like um it's a little bit like you're saying the driving thing um my brother is uh, was was like my baby. There's about 12 years between us, and he works as an electrician in Saudi, but he is very sharp and very shrewd, and we've a very close relationship. And he's very droll with his advice. And when he hears, you know, I'll do the North of Ireland in two days, and he'd say to me, "Are you mad? You know, to go that distance and you're away and you've got juggling. I have to, you know, my parents have to take Kaya and I have to arrange." people to get them to school and so these days like you're saying I'm sitting here thinking in my office I work from the side of my house I've just bought a new unit um, to transfer everything out there and I have kind of thought that um, even what I spend on diesel that money could actually go on marketing and I wouldn't have the panic and I wouldn't have the stress of being in Galway and thinking, I've only got 
two hours to do kind of a two and a half hour journey to get back for school or to get back for dancing or get back for something. And so um, it has opened my mind to more online. How I'm going to do that, I don't know yet. Um, well, I, I, think, I, think, I think if I may come in on this, it, this is very exciting to see your, you evolve in front of our eyes, right? Um, because there's, a, it, there's a, this cognitive dissonance in you, you and feel it, right? This tension between, like, yeah. I loved it, love meeting people face to face. But then we're doing this conversation, you and I, and having a cup of coffee, a lovely chat online, and it's, it's not quite as effective as us being in the same room, but it's, it's, it's pretty close. So, you know, can you imagine a, a time when you're reaching out to, I know one of your clients, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is Michael Henney's up in... Uh, yeah, in yeah. So can you imagine having, uh, you know, a, a meeting with Michael Henney's from Cork, they're in their place, right? Everybody saves time and uh, you're able to present your wares. And by, by doing a call such as this, I think it's really exciting for you, Sharon. And mm -hmm. you, mentioned, you mentioned about a lady down in Dingle who wants to buy your stuff. You know, the reach... We, we, did a, we did a lady on the show there a couple of weeks back um, and she was talking about reach. She, you know, we were talking, Yvonne Dolan, uh, I was asking her, was she going online for margin? And she said, no, it's about reach. I can supply my product now in the UK. I can supply my product now in France. And you yeah. can, you know, so very, and I love diesel into marketing. When I look at my expenses, you know, I, I would kind of sometimes say, I don't really have a budget for marketing. Um, and uh, even when it comes down to, I suppose it's taken me time even to get to Instagram. And um, I was telling you earlier, I have never done a live video um, for my collection and it is very visual. And so I have a girl who now does um, kind of the back end of the website and she helps me with some of the, the posts. And she said, I'm giving you a challenge. I was telling her I'm doing this today. I'm giving you a challenge. After that, you're going to do a short video and we're going to post it today. So I said, okay, okay, I'll do it. So we're I think sometimes to. also it's change. It's change. We're yeah. afraid sometimes of change. We're going to applaud you. This is the way we applaud people in the co coffee at 11 cafe because everybody's <laughs> good, right? Going to Thank you. On being brave, but I'm going to bring you straight back to what you said. I never imported anything in my life. Right. You also never did a live video before any time in your life. You're going to do one straight after this. You yeah. also never necessarily traded online before in your life. You're going to do it. Kai Kai Kids is about to explode as far as I'm concerned. Right. This, you know, I think this is wonderful. You also said to me, which I'm delighted to hear, that you bought a new unit. Didn't know that because I've been, you know, I've been, you know, peeping in at your journey over the last number of years. Right. And I've, I've witnessed some of the challenges and struggles. Delighted for you, Sharon. This is very... Oh, thank you. Do you know what? I was so excited about doing it. It's something that I probably needed to do before. And um, it's, it's very much to take the business out of the house as well. And um, it'll be more organized. It just kind of all happened when COVID happened. So it arrived and I thought, oh my God. And now it's all calmed down. Um, obviously, I can't get workers now. The electricity is connected. And now I'm just waiting for the rest of it for shelving to be put in and all of that. But it'll be all in one space, which will be way better. I'm delighted for you, Sharon. Absolutely. Thank delighted. you. It is, has been and is a pleasure having you on the Cathy to Levin show this morning. Thank you for being you and for coming on. Um, we're going to go to Q&A from the floor because I'm quite sure there's some questions there waiting to be asked of you. I hope they're very hard, actually, to be honest, right? But anyway, okay, challenge me. Challenge <laughs> Okay, but before we do go there, uh, uh, Sharon, please give us one tip. What would you say to your nearest and dearest, somebody you love? You're going to get through COVID and out the far end best if you do blah. What's that blah for you? Um, I think uh, take every day as it comes. Don't plan the future because absolutely nobody knows. The professionals don't know. The politicians don't know. Um, make use of the time that you have. So this is a really good time to maybe... Well, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm thinking, um, what can I do now that will benefit when we all get back to normal? We will get back. It's just, it's a matter of time. And utilize this time, but don't overthink it. I love it. I love it. Uh, take every day as it comes. Utilize this time, but don't overthink it. I do think that's a challenge for a lot of people. I think we all mm. suffer at times if we allow ourselves to overthink what can happen. Uh, so I think we need to relax into go with the flow. You said something there, which is absolutely perfect. When this ends, not if. When, yeah. if, beautiful. Sharon, pleasure having you on. Okay, we're going to go to Q&A from the floor. Who is first up? Sarah Ward, you're live. Hi, Sharon, how are you? I'm great, Sarah. 
I just want to say I, I admire your, um, your survival instincts. You're incredible. You just get up and you, you go and, and everything, every obstacle you come across, you just you take it on with everything. Um, I, think, I think myself from the sound of you, you're going to be a huge success online and really it's, it's no bother to you. You have the personality. Oh, Sarah, thank you, you very much. You know, really, really, you'll just go for it and I think you'll just fly. You know. Thank you. Um, I, I think definitely the online thing, I've kind of now stepped huge. out of my comfort zone. And yeah. um, it's, uh, it's the video now after this, okay? No pressure. But I'm committing do, that do. ability just, to all of you. <laughs> just give it a, a bash. I mean, I have a nephew now who has uh, shops and stuff. And uh, because of COVID and stuff, it's, it's been challenging. But uh, yeah. he's doing online. He's, he's basically just doing what you're doing and trying to get into it it's all new and stuff and just towards everybody's throwing themselves into online basically it um, is and i think every company is the same every business is feeling something and it's uh, for me it's just how how can i move this on and the other thing that i thought of this morning is that if this is not actually bad business nobody is not working because they made bad choices or it's bad business it's, it's, it's just life situation. Yeah, it's a situation that was thrown at us, and there has to be business after this. So we have yeah, to keep going. Yeah. And you're right. It's a, it's how you think of things, really. We have a choice, and we have to think of things in a in a in a more constructive way. And uh, yeah. a lot, a lot of businesses are going to go online, clothing businesses, because it's the way to go. It is. Know? I agree as well. Thank you, Sarah. No problem. Well Thank said. You. Well said. That was beautiful, Sarah. Thank you for that. And. Uh, Sharon, um, that's lovely to hear Sarah coming in and giving you that, that you know the, the heads up there and, and wishing you every success. And Absolutely, I appreciate success. it. I really do believe she's right. I think there's there's magic in you and your brand putting that together and going online. But coming from Sarah Ward, I think it's even more special because Sarah came online live on the cafe on Monday. And oh. Sat yeah, absolutely. So you need to go back and check out Sarah's uh, Sarah's. Yes, I will. I'll check you as well. Yeah. C c control the controllables. That was Sarah's piece of wisdom. Control the controllables. Oh, that sounds interesting. You need to check it out. So we're going to Princess Shelley to find out what's been going on. Hey, good morning, Sharon. Um, thanks for a great interview. Um, oh, thanks, Shelley. I, oh, it was really, really great. Really great. Um, Lisa Chalfa has joined us in the cafe. And um, upon entering, Lisa gave us a wave and said um, hi to everyone. Um, as Colm mentioned a little bit earlier on, um, that Eamon really appreciated and related to this, this nothing is the end of the world, you will always find a solution that he capitalised, love this. Um, so that's a bit of a mantra there that we might repeat a few times today. Um, I popped into um, the comment section there for the guest to the cafe today, your website and your Instagram, so hopefully people will follow that. And then Thank Lisa you. said, Lisa Chalfa, who's in the cafe still, she said she loves this story, Sharon. Um, she said, my family was in the rag trade, grew up with it, McDonald's factory and bridal community shop, communion shops, I beg your pardon, in Dublin City. Great energy and great story. Seems like online is the way to go for business. Time, cost, environmental savings, and extended reach. However, I will miss personal interactions, which is like you said, you love that. Thanks yeah. for sharing your great story. Wishing you continued success. Which is a lovely Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. So, um, so yeah, I for one, just before handing back, if I'm not sure if anyone else has a question, um, if you do guys pop up your hand and we'll come to you before going back to Colm in the studio. But I can see Ian, I'll come to you there now, Ian. But just before I, I go to Ian's question, Sharon, do you know what I did? Love, I was going to pop it in, but then I was like, well, I'm going to be reading it. Uh, is I love how you just don't acknowledge a boundary into entry into something. You know, there's, it's so easy to look, oh, no, it, I can't do this because it's in Turkey and I'd have to go all the way and I have to go on a seven hour bus ride and so many people would be off put by that and I love that you didn't and that will be a bit of a takeaway for me today is that you just didn't even see any boundary to entry into what you're doing um, I think that's that's there's a lot of value in that and thank you for that thank um, you I'm, thanks for saying that no I love it I love it it's my takeaway Ian you had a question so I'll just unmute you and then we'll um, let Sharon respond and go back to Colm here we go you're live Ian great thanks Shelley and uh, thanks a million Sharon as well um, hi there it's not so much a question um, uh, but just a kind of a couple of a couple of thoughts really I, I love the story 
um, like love the story and just love the kind of the pattern and uh, and just your your thought process and how you move forward and what comes next and figuring it out and um, and, and that type of thing. So um, in terms of the videos, I was you a few months back. Uh, like I'm not the pro that Colin O'Brien is in terms of videos and, and the whole thing. So um, you, you, look, you don't need this advice, but I think the only advice I can offer is is just to to do it. Uh, the first time I did it, I think I posted either the 24th or the 27th take. I can't quite remember. <laughs> um, and after that, I just figured out, uh, just post the bloody thing because you know what the hell. And, and what I found out as well is that the more authentic they are. Uh, the better they are, and it's just you and, and your own thoughts and that type of thing. And so, uh, loved your story. The only other thing uh, I wanted to say was I've just become your 2,882nd follower on Instagram, and um, so uh, looks great. And uh, I think you definitely have a book in you, and, and let <laughs> me know when you do. I'll I'll be the uh, the first buyer of that. So uh, so well done and good luck. Oh, Ian, thank you very much. They're, um, they're lovely things to hear. And you know the way when, when, when this is your life, you kind of think, oh, sure, look, everybody's doing the same thing. And it's more so since I've moved back because um, I've moved back into literally the village that I was born into. And it's when I see, I suppose, people that I know that are still here and they never left. And when I start to think about my own life, um, I'm very grateful that I went for my 20 years. I have... I've had the most amazing ride, literally the whole way to Turkey. It's been fun and it's been uh, challenging in times, but all all on and up. Even even the downs were ups. Yeah. <laughs> um, the video thing, I think you're right. I, I've just overthought it and um, thinking too much that, oh my God, I must have the right stuff and I, I it must be the right language. So I'm going to give that a go today and I'm going to think about you. I'm not going to do 27 right. today. I did, no, don't, no, do do one. Um, <laughs> quantity versus quality, and that's an argument that comes up all the time. I do sales training and that, so is it quantity or quality? I, I think like it's both, but I think quantity actually is better because the more you do, the better you get, the better the quality comes. You can't have quality without the quantity, so just get stuck in and be better than you think it will be anyway. So, yeah, great, well done. I think so too, yeah. I'm doing this, so we're fine. Absolutely. You're live. What can go wrong? Yeah. Colm's here to catch us. Ian, thank you for that. That was, that was lovely. It was a lovely conversation. And, and thank you for the, uh, for the, the advice. Um, we've all done the 24, 25 takes to try and get something perfect. Uh, at the end of the day, it's going to come out as it's going to come out. Um, you know, I was scared stiff of this type of stuff. I, rec I wrote a book in, in 2013, published in 2015, and then recorded it. And I couldn't literally breathe when I was recording the book. I was getting through a whole page, recording it, I couldn't breathe, which is ridiculous, right? Because it's all up here, okay? So uh -huh. start, when this idea started, when I started doing my Coffee with Colin on Sunday, it was it was shocking, shockingly bad, right? It's less shockingly bad now. <laughs> several hundred of them, right? It has led to this, and this is just, it's a joy. So get out there and be you, and it's going to be great. And <laughs> Ian, it's, it's live. What could go wrong? Regrettably, some, some of us uh, saw it go wrong the other day, and... Uh, Props to everybody who has stayed with us through that. Sharon McDermott, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm just going to, if I may, uh, welcome Lisa Chalfa, a friend of mine from some years back. And Lisa has been sniffing around the cafe and uh, hasn't managed to make it in live uh, until today. So Lisa, it's lovely to have you in here live today. Thank you for that. Um, for everybody else who's been part of the show since day one, really appreciate having you here uh, for the, the uh, Coffee at 11 team. Uh, produced by Princess Shelley, uh, made um, welcoming by Mr. Amos Smith, and of course our editor-in-chief is the lovely Katrina O'Brien, who's uh, listening to us. Uh, uh, and by the way, Katrina, you're getting you're getting the uh, the wave there, uh, although you can't see us. Uh, to my special guest Sharon McDermott, once again, thank you for coming in and being open and honest and joining us. Uh, on Coffee at 11. So we'll give you the Coffee at 11 wave. Oh, thank you, Colm. And I just want to say thank you to everybody else as well. So it was a great privilege. And um, it was really good to do. And I appreciate the advice as well. So I'm taking all that on board. Thank you, Sharon. And I, I put your uh, your Instagram and stuff into the chat so people uh, can follow you there. Uh, Brilliant. Thank you. Following Ian's lead. And um, before I let you all go, let me just tell you what's happening on Coffee at 11 tomorrow, because as, as you know, every day we've got a, a, an interesting and exciting guest. Tomorrow we've got our first um, 
think it's our first Frenchman on the show, Pascal Derrien. And uh, Pascal is a Frenchman living in Ireland, and he says himself he's got a funny accent. He told me <laughs> about himself. He spent the first three years of his life in a caravan. No idea where that's going, right? We'll find out tomorrow. Uh, but then he became a senior executive. I mean, we're talking senior, senior executive at Microsoft and all these big companies, right? And now he runs a, a, um, a social enterprise business in Dublin. He manages a social enterprise business in Dublin. Health fanatic. Uh, he's a diabetic marathoner, right? Uh, and he was a health fanatic and then diabetes hit and it changed the way he looked at life. So really excited about having Pascal on the show tomorrow. So uh, if you've got an opportunity, come back in and have a listen. Uh, an absolute pleasure, Sharon McDermott, once more. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.